Hey, what's up, Scott Balkin here with Imagination Creation Films, and today, well, we are talking about orbitals, spinning, camera rigs that whiz around, and well, you can do those too. Calm down before you stress up the groove, the energy a little different when the blessings accrue. Hey, who you talking to? Just know I ain't no regular fool, could be anything in the world, but I can never be you, because I had time like a moment. So it's a really fluid, just like high energy camera movement that, well, it just kind of unlocks your creative juices and, you know, gets you thinking about things. And I really dig that. And I, I'd really been thinking about doing it for, well, a couple of years. I'd seen a friend do one. His was super high energy. Uh, it was really wild. He did it with a phantom camera. Um, but then I wanted to scale that down. And uh, I just saw recently Josh from Make Art Now. He's actually developed, uh, I think it's called the Marble. It is a purpose-built orbiting rig. Uh, I think it goes on Kickstarter here in like a few days. So if you're looking for a purpose-built one, you should check that one out. But for me, I mean, I have a, a lot of Kessler gear and I thought, well, maybe I could do it with the Kessler stuff. And you know what? I, I could, and well, you could too. Quick disclaimer. The uh, Kessler stuff was not designed for this. There's a lot of loads. I'll talk about that as we go. Uh, so you're doing it at your own risk. They can't be responsible if you damage your, your pan head by putting too much stress on it that it wasn't intended to do. So let's just be real and, and just, just follow good, simple practices and you're not going to damage it and you won't have to worry about it. But just understand yeah so you could do a diy version of it uh, i've seen people do it with a um lazy susan i've seen people do it with an axle i've seen people do it with a gasoline motor that one was really hilarious um but this one we're going to do literally with the kessler pan head this right here and the second shooter controller which you can use the second shooter the second shooter plus or the second shooter pro all three of them will do the exact same thing. And a lot of people did not know this, but in the second shooter, it has a turntable mode. And turntable means this just spins. And you can spin it up or spin it down, however you like. You don't have to program it. You just say, go left, go right. That is literally it. Well, that turntable mode is actually all you need for an orbiting camera rig. Now. There are two different types of pan motors from Kessler. They have, this one is the high speed, uh, and it's it's really fast. Uh, it's, it's also, it's a little scary because it spins really, really fast. Uh, I mean, here's a clip here that I would kind of post on social media. I was, I was just laughing, having so much fun with it. Um, but because it spins so much faster, the loads will translate quicker to potentially destroying your equipment. So again, be careful. This is the regular speed. They look identical. The just difference is, is that one of them says high speed on the side and the other one does not. You can do this two different ways. You can have it orbit where the camera is looking up or you can suspend it overhead where the camera is actually looking down. In my case, in almost every situation that I could come up with, I would rather it orbit from above than down on the bottom. It just makes it easier. It also allows for lighting, et cetera, et cetera. But pan head, really simple. You need an arm. This right here, I'm just building a very small version. This is just a Vanguard three in one. Uh, it allows you to mount multiple cameras on a boom, but it also is a perfect little version of the the orbiting camera. Now, when you're dealing with the orbiting camera, there's a couple of things you're gonna run into, and that is the direct center of the pan axis. That is key, because it needs to go directly down when it's, when it's overhead, you need to map it directly down to a spot on the ground, or, and this is an interesting thing, if you are shooting something that's like a glass and it's taller, you don't actually want the center to be the bottom of the glass. You want the center to be the top of the glass. And so you'll have to point your camera to that as well. So you have 
a large boom. And this is where the forces come in. When you put a boom on there and on my big rig up there on Frankenrig, I use a seven foot long boom and I have it equally distant on both sides. And the reason is, is you have to counterbalance your ball head here and your camera. And again, this is a small version. Uh, I was using the A7S III on that one. I've flown the Komodo on it, but the more offset it is, the more counterweight you have to put on here to equal this out, which means your overall rig goes up in weight, which means there's now more inertia that has to be overcome by the pan motor. And we'll talk about that as, as we turn them on and spin them. So on, on this one, you can move it in and out as you need. And this is a very small version, but it would actually work quite well for just a spinning cam where you drop something in, it would work. But you can see here, it is not balanced. So we need to put a little weight on there. And this is a very crude method to do so. You definitely want these to be secure. This is this is moving, but I mean, this is for now. I would, I would put some spacers in here and get this really locked off. So now you have this whole rig. This rig right here does not weigh that much and I wouldn't feel, I wouldn't really feel at all concerned about spinning it, even with the high speed, because it's not that much weight. Uh, as you get to a longer and longer boom and you have weight sticking out the sides, that's when the torque required to spin that up is, is really going to uh, potentially cause problems if you spin it too fast or if you stop it too fast. I mean, this is it. You put this in upside down, mount it however you want. Uh, I, I suspend mine across with rails, uh, with speed rail. So once you've got this on here and it's balanced both left and right, then you just need to plug it in and turn it on. So let's just do that right here. Let's clear a path. Let's take our second shooter pro. Let's get a battery out. We'll plug that in. I mean, again, this is, you can do this with a lot of different rigs. You could do it with just, you know, a lazy Susan, I guess. Um, this one is just motorized and well, it's, it's more funner. Let's just plug it in. And then we're gonna talk about inertia because inertia is an object in motion tends to stay in motion. And uh, well, that's that can be your enemy here when it comes to gears. Because <laughs> these all have drive gears inside, they have belts, they have all kinds of stuff and you don't want to uh, destroy those. So uh, on the Kessler stuff, Let's go standalone. There's a mode called turntable. Press enter, and then it says turntable speed 100%. No. Hold down the arrow, go all the way down. And the, as you hold it, it will then go down to uh, by tens. But we want to ramp this up, and we want to ramp it down because we wanna control inertia. So if we start it up really fast, there's a lot of load on here, especially if you got a big one, and it will jerk uh, and it could potentially break it. So you start it really slowly, it gets it moving and then you just ramp it up, get it going. And then when you wanna stop, ramp it down. Let's just start it. So we just push pan and it's going really, really slow. Let's ramp it up. It's also really good to ramp these up based upon um, your surroundings to make sure you're gonna clear. Uh, this is clearing, we'll just speed it up. And yeah, it kind of makes a little bit of noise uh, because you're running this thing really fast. The high speed motor is, well, it's it's a lot faster. Let's, uh, let's spin this one down and then we'll just swap this out real quick because and then you can stop it. Let, let, let's, let's, let's spin it up. So that's a 1% on the high speed. And now we're gonna just go spin it up here. Ooh. Yeah, you can see the motor actually moved because it wasn't locked down and the torque is spinning it up. That's 50%. Whoop, oh, oh, oh boy. Yeah, danger, danger. 
We're gonna spin this back down. And this is literally why you don't do a tabletop version of this without mounting this securely with, with something. I mean, you can see that get out of hand pretty quick. There's a lot of force. This could hit somebody in the head. A lot of safety that you have to keep in mind when you're doing something like this because you don't want to get hurt. You just want to have some fun. So mounted overhead is, is really good. And make sure that you have clearances everywhere. Just run it really slowly all the way around a couple of times. Get used to it. Make sure you are in a zone, a little spot that you don't step out of so that you don't get hurt. Uh, I mean, it's a lot of fun. You could do a lot of, of great things with it. Uh, one of those, those points I was trying to make about the spot, finding that spot that's right in the center of the pan motor all the way on the bottom. When you, um, when you have it mounted overhead, if you want to find where that spot is, if you have a plumb bob, if you don't know what that is, they're kind of cool. You should have one. Uh, it's just a string with a weight and a point at the end. And it will, you hold it at the very center of your pan axis up, up here, and it will point exactly with weight just where it is. But, you know, if you're just cheap like me, you can just get a uh, clamp, clamp it in the middle with some cheap paracord. If you hold it right to the center, and uh, I mean, it will, it will tell you exactly where the center is right there. And then you can put a mark, and now you know that's where it is. But yeah. Pretty simple, pretty fun, pretty uh, pretty exciting stuff. So yeah, tell me what you think about it down below. If you like it, don't like it, you know, it's all cool. If you have any questions or comments, put those down there. I try to read and respond to each and every one. Remember to subscribe, give us a thumbs up if you like it. Uh, you can support me you can, with the applause button down below. You can join my monthly memberships down there as well. I also have a Patreon. I have uh, PayPal down there you can tip or you can just use any of the affiliate links down below. Each and every one, they just, they just help. And uh, don't you want to help? Yeah. But remember to subscribe, click the alert bell, all that good stuff. And as always, as I like to leave it, don't let your passions center around your life. Let your life center around your passions. Mm -hmm.